Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Albert Tercasso, and believe it or not, this is actually Humanity Matters Live. Now, you're probably thinking, what on, on earth is this? Well, my friends, my transportation is not currently working. And due to the fact that there was predictions of freezing rain, and Annette, my co-host, is not able to be here for this episode, but she had gotten hurt when she was about 18, and uh, she had gotten a broken nose from freezing rain. So we were going to get alternative transportation, the bus and the subway, to get to the studio. But unfortunately because they said that maybe freezing rain and snow and a few other things, we weren't able to make it. And as many of you know, we weren't able to be there in February. So we're doing something <laughs> first of its kind, really, first of its kind for me, at least. I don't know about for PCTV, but for me, it's the first of its kind. And I'm actually using my cell phone or wireless device and I'm patched through Skype to the station. So that's why you see this, this red, red curtain. And of course, you can see, obviously, I need some upgrades in our personal property life. But I decided I was going to give it a shot. I did not want to go two episodes in a row not showing up. Now, there are some other Unfortunately, some other things we can't do today, we can't take calls because unfortunately, sorry about that, unfortunately, I'm not at the station, I can't see text or, or uh, answer calls. So what I would like all of you viewers to do is just listen to my thoughts on this. But what I can tell you is I would like your feedback. So I'd like you to go to Albert Torcaso, T-O-R-C-A-S-O, -S on Facebook, and you can be a friend of mine. If you happen to be watching this live on PCTV21.org, you can look at it, and it will be streaming live, and it will possibly be on, well, it should be on the Pittsburgh Community Television Channel and Facebook page so you can see it that way those of you who are actually watching i would really appreciate it if you told all of the other viewers that you know and friends of yours who normally watch this episode and this series you know tell them to tune in now this is a crazy situation but i want to say something about that the name of this episode is common sense this episode is going to talk about recent trends. But before we get into that, I want to tell you why this, even though this is very rudimentary and <laughs> like D-rated in terms of the set or F-rated even, this is an achievement. This is a triumph. And I'll tell you why. In order to do this, this has got to, has got to be one of the most bizarre places I've ever heard of shooting a live show or a video. And what I had to do to get this done is insane, almost. As I shoot this, I'm going to give you some behind the scenes of what I'm actually doing to, to broadcast this through the station. And I have to give props to John Bursick and the people of PCTV for the fact that we're even able to attempt this. Now, also let it be known that I am on my Wi-Fi network and I am using my cell phone. So at any time, I could lose the connection through my Skype and therefore we could, the episode could just end. So if it does end, the station will put something on there or go to the next episode programming. But understand the attempt that we're doing here. It's a huge triumph for myself. And frankly, the station, I don't know if they've ever tried this before. So this, this is pretty amazing stuff. But I have to share with you 
some behind the scenes because it's so ridiculous that I want to share with you because I want to bring it to a point. So what I'm about to tell you, there is relevance and it is about you. Yeah, that's right. How you can achieve everything in your life regardless of the odds. And this is not supposed to be a motivational speaking thing, but I just got to throw this at you. You're watching me on my cell phone, as I had said. But <laughs> what you don't realize is that I had to get a bedspread. That's what this literally is, is a sheet to cover up some things because, you know, things happen in life. And the phone is resting. Now, wait till you hear this. Resting on a step ladder, and the phone is in addition to that. I have three cans of shaving cream that's keeping this phone in place. So, why I'm telling you all that is I got the ladder and I set this up. Why I'm telling you all of this stuff, as bizarre as it is, as crazy as this look, as frankly, amateur. Amateurish that it is, there's a message there. It's a message of hope. It's a message of triumph. You know, I could have easily said, well, can't do the show again because I couldn't get my car to work because I got stuck. So I couldn't get there. I could have easily done that. Instead, I concocted this crazy location and I have a ladder and I have this, all this going on. And also, it took courage to do this. And I'll tell you why I say that. Clearly, you can see that because of my medical condition and overcoming, you know, overcoming, a, I forget what it's called, a cash flow challenge. There you go. You can see my house is in disarray and it could use a cleaning. Let's be honest. I'm being honest, man. I, I point that out not to cut myself down. But actually, to build us up, you and I. And I'll tell you why I say that. If I have the courage to bring you into my house, let you see the skeletons in the closet, that I have a medical problem, that, that I need to work on this. Okay? I, I, you know, if I'm willing to do that, you got to ask yourself, why would I go this way? Why would I even dare do what I'm doing? And you're the reason. I know this sounds kind of corny, but it's because of my sister Diane. It's because of past guests like Sarah Sachs. It's because of all of you. And it's because of you out there that may have always had dreams in your life and nothing but obstacles came in. Or maybe you just have zero hope. You, you became hopeless. Well, let me tell you something. If I can do this and I could put my career kind of on the line, you know, this is a pretty dangerous thing to do career-wise, but I really don't care. I'm, I'm going to get there one way or another. But if I'm willing to do this, I also want you to see what that demonstrates. I could have easily said, well, can't go. And then the show wouldn't go on. But I came up with an inventive and creative idea. But I also have to give props to Gladys Jelts over there at PCTV. Because when I was on the phone with her, she said, well, couldn't you get some other ways to, she, she said some books and pile them up. And I thought about it for a minute. And then I said to myself, well, wait a minute, I got a ladder. Let me try that. So I did. But the point is, I overcame a huge obstacle. Okay, no, I don't like the way this looks. I guarantee you, I feel like this is the most amateur thing, amateurish thing I had to ever do in my life. But at the same time, let us look past that. Let us think about the content and let us think about you. What is it that you don't think you can do, but if you just get an imagination or you, you, you try to do be MacGyver, I pretty much did a MacGyver set here. You know, from the old series and the new series, MacGyver, I've concocted a way to do something. And fortunately, John Bursick was able to make the Skype work. 
which this is all new for me. I don't know how much we're station, but it's all new for me. This is amazing, frankly. So I want you to understand that. I want you to relate this to Diane. I want you to relate this to Eddie. I want you to relate this to, if you're an 18 year old, you happen to see this somehow, some way, and you're like, dang, I didn't think you could do that. Well, I don't care if you're working at a fast food restaurant and you have always said, I want to do this. I want to go to school. I want to become a billionaire or a millionaire. I want to help feed people, whatever it is. But you always had those obstacles. Believe me, if I can get through this, you can get through everything. And I say that not out of arrogance. I believe in a higher power personally. But I don't say that out of arrogance. I know that there are things in our lives that is very hard to deal with. I get it. But you can do this. Now, if I get cut off because it says poor network connection, so I may get cut off. That's a possibility. Let me say this, though. Let me get into why I was mainly here. I want to say something about gun control. For those of you who don't agree with me, you know, comment on Facebook or send me a Facebook message or what have you. But, you know, I believe in the Second Amendment. Yes, I am a registered Democrat. I believe in the Second Amendment. And back in the day, I used to like to go and do target shooting. I believe Americans need to have a right to have personal firearms for a variety of reasons. But I believe it must be responsible and common sense. Now, I had seen something online saying we don't need gun control. We don't need to stop letting people buy certain weapons. What we need is Jesus in the schools or God in the school. Now, my statement to that is, and I am a baptized Christian. I went through the baptism of the Church of Jesus Christ, actually, the Church of Christ. Any rate, and I love people from all the moment, all, all denominations and all that. But with regards to not having gun control, not reducing the bump stocks and all that, I think that is frankly insane. It is killing our children. It is killing, frankly, a lot of people. And truly, we must have gun control. And we need to have common sense gun control. You know, a longer waiting period or checking everything, closing the loopholes on this nonsense um, with the, you know, gun shows and what have you. So we need the gun control. Now, do we need a higher power and do we need God in school? Now, I feel that we should have God back in school. We need to have children have some type of belief that there is a better way, but also we need to do much more than have gun control and have God in schools. We need to have a, a society where we are creating opportunities and possibilities for children of every pigmentation, every single financial, uh, you know, I mean, the scale. From everybody in America, let's put it this way. Everybody in America needs to have access to education and opportunity. People who are profoundly disabled mentally, there is something in their life that they can be good at. You know, my father, Albert R. Goldsmith, a non-biological father, he used to teach people that were believed to not have any possibilities whatsoever of ever being taught. And he taught them. And some of them went on to college and I think one or two even became a doctor. Yeah, a doctor. From being said they could from being told they could never even learn, their parents were told or their guardians, to some of them becoming a medical doctor. See my friends, it's not that we can't do things but if we don't have access to things, if we don't have opportunity, 
if we don't have somebody that finds a way to teach us to overcome all obstacles, sort of like what happened here. There's no logical reason I was able to do this, but I was able to do it. But if we can just think our way through things as an entrepreneur, as an inventor, as a doctor, as a, uh, you know, a person that's in television, such as John, we could just think our way through it. I promise you, none of us ever have to be feeling that we can't achieve. And all of us could actually have the American dream or the Indian dream, if you see this overseas, or Moroccan dream, or, you know, Somalian dream. I actually have viewers from Somalia, actually. His name is Fawzi, Fawzi, F-A-W-Z-I, Fawzi. So hi, Fawzi. Now getting back to the business of the guns. Look, I happen to like firearms but only as a target shooting type of thing. I would never, ever want to, ever want to do any hunting. That's me personally, I no. And um, when I had gotten professional training back in the 80s, I soon decided I didn't want to shoot anymore because I realized the power of any firearm. Now, the firearm I shot was a 357. And then I shot a nine millimeter and uh, I think one was a 12 gauge, maybe one was a 20 gauge, but powerful weapon. Now I never shot an automatic or semi-automatic, but the fact is with just a nine millimeter, a semi-automatic gun or firearm, you can usually shoot, I believe up to 15 rounds or 15 bullets for those of you don't that don't know it as rounds just a normal firearm can do enough killing to successfully harm or kill people in a very very fast manner and disgusting manner the idea that we have these ar-15s that are really military style weapons and they have what they call bump stocks. And you can liter literally shoot hundreds or thousands of rounds if you had enough and enough of the cartridges. It's insane. And while I do believe in the Second Amendment, and if you have the licensings and trainings and you can only use them in certain ranges, maybe that would be okay. But the idea of the National Rifle Association, yeah, I'm going to call them out. Or the Republican members of re Congress and a lot of Democrats being bought off by the National Rifle Association and other gun lobbyists. And the idea that most Republicans and a lot of Democrats won't even touch gun control, even after all these killings, because they don't want to be considered a threat to our Second amend Amendment. But there are other amendments, my friends, like the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You out there have a right to go to your local Walmart without being afraid somebody's going to blow your brains out. I'm sorry, I know it's the 6 o'clock dinner hour, but we have the 6 o'clock news, we have WTAE, we have WPXI, we have um, KDK, and they tell us all about the murders and all the bad things all the time. Well, sometimes Albert Tercasso has to call ugly, ugly. And this is a time that I'm going to call it ugly. And the fact is that the majority of Republicans in Congress, I'm going to call it as I see them. Now, this is not against the people who vote Republican. No, 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 no. And, and don't ever think that because I'm cutting out, cutting down on a party, whether it's Republican or Democrat, it's you that I'm cutting on. No. That may be your philosophy that we were, may disagree on. But the thing is, let me, I was going to say something else, but I'm going to change that. 
I'm going to listen to Vice former Vice President Joe Biden. He said, don't cut people down. And I agree. I want to lift people up, including the Republican Party. I want to lift them up. I don't like how they do things, but I don't want to cut people down. So let's, let's do it a different way. I will say to all members of Congress, Democrat, Republican, all senators, all representatives, all independents, and whatever else there may be, now or in the future. We must instill gun control. We must have background checks. We must close the loopholes. And we must strengthen the laws so that if law enforcement agencies or intelligence agencies find information on people breaking the new gun control laws and allowing certain people in society getting illegal weapons or, quote unquote, the criminals, and they look the other way, we must have laws that you Congress members, Republican and Democrat, must first write, and you, Mr. Donald Trump, must sign into law a two-prong bill or law, which would both bring gun control, common sense. I'm not talking about taking guns out of people's hands, necessarily, but first of all, they should be required to have training. They should need to have some kind of psychological testing. I think it makes sense. And if the law enforcement agencies don't take these guns when they know these people are dangerous and criminals or, met, or you know, extremely unstable, then they should face criminal penalties. Because let's, let's, let's bring the elephant in the room that no Democrat or Republican really wants to speak about. There's a lot of crimes of all types that for whatever reason, a lot of law enforcement, and I'm not cutting down on law enforcement. No, if you're an officer, I'm not cutting you down. There may be certain limitations that you can or cannot do. Okay, I understand that you have to prove a crime or intent. I get that. But we need to do something to stop these murders. Because not only if we do not do some kind of common sense gun control, if we do not, if we do not decide that we need to cut, you know, close these loopholes, then we can look forward to, and not look forward to at all, but we can expect more tragedies. We can expect more school shootings. More mass murders. Mass murders. We can expect more murders in our churches, in our synagogues. We can expect more murders in our, in our temples. We can expect murders at the Walmart. We can expect murders at the most expensive hotels in America. If we decide, as Americans, that we're going to continue to allow gun lobbyists and even fellow Americans to say, we must not do this because it will kill the Second Amendment. That is a lie. That is a dishonest tactic. But if we keep allowing it, we will not be safe anywhere. We will not be safe at the studio. We will not be safe at the grocery store. We will not be safe at our churches. We will not be safe at our schools. We will not be safe at the post office. We will not be safe anywhere. And quite frankly, because of the political actions of the last few Congresses, and really the last 30 years, including both Congresses and both parties, I mean, both parties, because of the actions and the 
inability to think about the will of the people and allowing corporations and lobbyists and all of that to pretty much destroy America. Because of that, and because of these new policies of tax cuts and banking and all that, all of this is going to combine together to increase mental health, instability, depression, and hopelessness in America. So that being the case, there, in my opinion, is going to be an increase in violence in America overall. Within the next one to 10 years, unfortunately, I believe violence of all types will unfortunately increase exponentially. So I would say to each and every American out there, I don't care if you're from Pittsburgh, PA, Philadelphia, PA, Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, how are you doing, Randy Bartlow? Me? I have to let Randy from Ohio know. Yes, Randy Bartlow, me, one of my uh, friends. And uh, also Mason Wise from Ohio. How you doing? How you doing? And, and, my, and my friend Jack Baxter and uh, Ivan Harris and Toby Balahoon. Yeah, all my family and friends. I, um, no matter where you live, though, I believe we are going to hurt this nation. So I would say to people from every Walk of life, Republican, Democrat, you know, constitutionalist, I don't care what you are, um, green, libertarian, reformist, who knows what, socialist, I don't know, Marxist, I don't know what else is out there. Frankly, I don't give a, an ear too much about it. I want to see us become the United States and remember that we are humans and we are Americans. That's what I care about. I don't know about you. And I'm not cutting you down, but that's what I care. But friends, I want to urge you to start contacting Congress, whether you text them, your members of Congress, whether you text them, whether you call them at 1-202-224-3121. That's 1-202-224-3121. Or whether you go on uh, www.senate.gov or www.house.gov. No matter how you communicate with them, I would urge you to urge them to get common sense gun control here and to maybe allow religion back in schools. But with one caveat, not just Christianity, but let's call it a moment of prayer and silence. So let us make room for the Buddhists to pray, the Muslims to pray, the Jews, the, the Hindus, whatever it may be, or the atheists to just remain silent. You know, we have a way, my fellow Americans, to do common sense things. And actually, we have a way to reduce the violence. Now, a moment ago, I said, call Congress about the gun control. You must do that. That means you, Diane Tercasso. That's right. I name names. Rose Schilling, Albert Tercasso. That's right. Me. I got to do it again. Call and just, it doesn't have to be difficult. Just say, I am. Well, your name is, I am Bob Jackson. And I support common sense gun control. But I also want you to call and speak about maybe having a surplus. I mean, um, you know, a, what they call that, a stimulus bill to help families that are struggling. A stimulus bill or, or a jobs bill or an infrastructure bill. And as far as Congress saying, we don't have the money for this, we don't have the money for that. They had the money for a trillion dollar tax cuts 
for the extreme wealthy, the extreme corporations that are even multinational, and so many loopholes for the super wealthy to become even more wealthy, while we all suffer those that are not multi-billionaires. They found money for that and ways to do that. And they're going to take money from the poor and they're going to take money from Medicare and Medicaid. And for those of you who don't believe that in Social Security, those of you who don't believe that, I hate to tell you, you're living in a fantasy. But they found money for things they felt was important. And they want to take away something that you fought for, you paid for, your Medicare and your Social Security. So I would urge you to call Congress on all of these matters. You always must be polite and tactful. And I would urge you every November to vote. Now, I know that it seems like I went off on a tangent here. But really, all of this is like glue. The school shootings are in direct relation, 90% of the school shootings are in direct, direct relation to a person who has been bullied, who may have become mentally ill or may not have become mentally ill, or they may have just lost it because they have been abused. And I would say to your to the parents out there, a lot of you out there have bullied children, and you don't know. You, you truly don't know it. And the reason why you don't know it is your children are afraid to speak to you about it because they know you will want to take action. And trust me, a lot of times if you go to their school or if you contact the Board of Education or the superintendent or whatever, and somehow those bullies find out, they will hurt your children worse. And yes, in some cases, they will kill and murder the children. And if you think that I'm just listening to talking points and I'm reiterating, the, reiterating one political, political party's points of view, let me tell you the truth about some of these school shootings or the school stabbing that happened in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, PA, a few years ago. Let me tell you what one of the motivating factors in these school shootings usually is. The child or teenager or even man or woman has been bullied. It doesn't make it right that they're going out and killing people or seeking revenge on the people that abuse them or just seeking revenge and killing innocent people. Of course, none of that's right. But let me tell you the reality. I know what it means to feel that way. When I was a child and a teenager, I was bullied in school. And I'm going to name names. I was bullied in my very first elementary school, Liberty School located in Shadyside in the city of Pittsburgh. Then I went to, at the time, it was called Friendship Elementary School. And that, I think, is called Montecure or something like that now. It's still in the Friendship area of Pittsburgh, PA. In Liberty School, I was beat up so bad that every day my mother would come with some lollipops the Tootsie Roll kind, and she would give them candy to this group of bullies to try to get them to quit beating me, beating, beating me up. She usually would come in the break time or lunch time. And sure enough, they'd take the candy, and then as soon as she was out of there and I would go heading towards class, they'd beat me up again. It didn't work. Her being there did not work. So then I went to friendship school at the time. And she hadn't, she would walk me to school, what have you, and try to talk to some of the people. Same thing happened. That's two elementary schools. 
Then I went to a school that's no longer in existence, and frankly, I'm glad. Risenstein Middle School, which was actually in East Liberty in the Pittsburgh area. And things got so bad at middle school, I was in the cafeteria eating lunch. There was a whole huge cafeteria. There were teachers there, coaches there, maybe even a vice principal or two there. And at one point, I was eating, and I had a fork in my mouth, and I was eating, I don't know, whatever it was. And somebody jabbed me with a fork in my back. So I had a fork in my mouth, and I was jabbed, and frankly, it did draw blood, so stabbed in the back. Now, you would think that with the whole cafeteria, that these kids were caught, and they were expelled, or even physically charged, I mean, criminally charged, and went to juvenile. Nothing happened. I want to say that to you again. Nothing happened. When it was brought to the attention of the school, to the vice principal, to the social worker, and the principal, and my mother brought it to their attention. I brought it to their attention. Nothing happened. So then, Frankly, I, and this is all about gun control. You may think this is not relevant, that I'm going off topic. Trust me, I'm not. Nothing happened. So what ended up happening is they accused my mom, my mother, of abusing me because I quit going to school. I was getting beat up every day at Risenstein to the point where I would come home with black eyes once I had my my left hand cut, and still nothing was done. Zero. Brought it to their attention again, nothing was done. And generally, what they would say to my mother was, we'll look into it. They never looked into it. Now, let me tell you what happened. They ended up sending me away for about five years altogether. That's how I ended up meeting my non-biological father and original foster father, Albert R. Goldson. That's how I met him. I was locked away, essentially victimized again by the system. Now, why am I telling you all this? Because let me tell you, when I was going through all that, and I'm not a violent man. I wasn't a violent kid, but when I was going through all that, I promise you, had I had access to a gun, it would have been bad. Why do I say that? Because you need to understand what your children may be going through right now. You need to understand that. You need to understand what happened in Parkland. It's hideous what that murderer did. He's mentally ill, maybe. He was abused. He may have just been, never been abused, but mentally ill. I don't know. What I do know is that the majority of these school stabbings and shootings are from children who were bullied and nothing was done or not enough. So let me tell you something, though. I'm not here to, to scare you to death, but if you need a wake-up call, wake up! I can tell you, I was stabbed in school, jabbed in school. I had my hand cut. I was robbed at gunpoint in the 80s at school. That's right. And nothing was done. That was reported. Nothing was done. So what's the point? The point of all of this is this. We need three things to happen. You need to contact your local government, Pittsburgh, PA, City Council, the mayor of Pittsburgh. You need to call the chief executive officer, Rich Fitzgerald. You need to contact the office of the governor. You need to contact the state legislator. You need to contact the state senators. You need to contact the United States Senate and the United States. Um, 
House of Representatives, you need to contact the office of the president. You can you can give a comment. That number is 202-456-1111. 202-456-1111. That's what you need to do. And you need to tell them, here are three things we can do right now that will reduce the gun killings in school. Actually, four things. First, we get common sense gun control. Second, we can have guards, armed or otherwise, at every school and have our local governments, our local school districts, and or the state or federal government combine and collaborate and pay for that. So we have gun control, we have metal detectors, we have guards, and we also must have in place anonymous ways for people and children or adults to report being bullied in every single report. I don't care what kind of resources it takes, must be checked thoroughly. And if they have to bring in the law enforcement, bring them in. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to see another Sandy Hook. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to see another Parkland. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to see another Colorado situation. And even the Batman movie, I think it was in Colorado. I believe that guy, he wasn't in school. He was in a theater. But he had a history of being abused. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. You can have your gun lobbyists and your NRA. And your Republicans and Democrats in Congress give you all the disinformation they want. Let me ask you a question. What if it's your child that's being bullied? And what if it's your child that finds a way to get a firearm or a knife or who knows what weapon? And they attack someone and kill someone. Or what if your child is a bull and you don't even know? And they get killed because they weren't stopped. Look, all bullies, all bullies are not bad. All bullies are not evil. A lot of bullies have been bullied and they found somebody else that they can attack, even maybe they're still getting attacked, and they found somebody they can actually pick on. It's a serious cycle. I would implore you, this is what I think you should do, implore you to have conversations with your children or find alternative ways to get it up. But we have got to take these actions. So let's do this. Let's get common sense gun control. Let us get guards in schools, metal detectors in schools, and colleges, not just schools. Let's not forget the colleges that have been attacked. And let's have anti-bullying programs in place and systems in place not only in our schools in our, and in our universities, but in the workplace. You know, we can look at the Me Too with a lot of what's going on in Hollywood with these actresses and actors talking about how they've been sexually manipulated and harassed. We need to look throughout society of finding anti-bullying and anti-harassment programs and act on it. I promise you, if a guy who's as nonviolent as I was could feel the way that I did, then your child right now, maybe they're not doing so well in school. For them, that those that may not want to go to school, play hooky or whatever they call it, skip school, drop out, whatever you want to call it, or maybe their grades are just like bad. 
It could have something to do with bullying. Let me tell you another problem that bullying causes. Over 2 million children a year. Over 2 million children and young adults a year commit suicide related to being bullied. Over 2 million children a year commit suicide because they're bullied. And a lot of the bullies, they're not all bad. Some of them kill themselves because they don't like who they became. Let's save lives. And it starts possibly at home or in your neighborhood. As far as what is the gist of this episode, it is called common sense. It's common sense that Americans or people around the globe should be allowed to have firearms. I would even say, honestly, I don't have a problem with if you are properly trained and you've been checked out psychologically, maybe having some you know, automatic weapons. But you can only use them on certain ranges. And you don't need them for self-defense or protection. Anyone that tells you you need them for self-defense or protection or to outgun the criminals, quite honestly, they are either being deceitful with you or they are delusional. Trust me. I have fired weapons in my life. I can tell you that a 38 special does the job. A nine millimeter will take down a person. And I can tell you that a shotgun or 3030 is going to do the job. Now, yes, these semi automatic weapons and the more smaller ones like an Uzi. Or um, I think it's called a Mac 10. Yes, they're more convenient, and yes, you can put a lot more uh, shells or cartridges in it. But the reality is, a firearm is going to take it down, usually take you down. And don't get me wrong, you know there is a place for those firearms, I suppose. But the reality is, this is what I would say. We need, as a human race, whether you live in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, Denver, Colorado, Zimbabwe, um, Tokyo, Japan, you know, uh, Istanbul, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you live in Rome, Italy. It doesn't really matter. The world and humanity, we need to de-escalate and quit having wars. We need to also Quit having all of these weapons. You know, I believe in the Second Amendment, but the fact is, every gun or firearm serves one purpose. Whether you say it's for self-defense or not, firearms have one purpose, to injure or kill. That doesn't mean I'm against them, because I like to shoot targets. Well, I haven't done it in 25, 30 years. But I don't have a problem with shooting targets. I have a huge problem with people hurting or killing each other. And I don't like hunting. For all the hunters out there, look, I'm not cutting you down. I personally, I don't believe in killing animals like that. But I will tell you this, I'm not a vegetarian, and I'm working to do that. Getting back to the meat and potatoes of the, the topic here. I know it seems like I went on a, off on a tangent, but all of this actually makes sense. Another way to reduce school violence outside of the bullying, having the metal detectors, the guards, and the anti-bullying programs, and common sense gun control. Another thing is we need to bring this country together again. Democrats need to work with Republicans. Conservatives need to work with liberals. And quit being, frankly, immature, childish. And both parties your actions or inactions is un American. We need to work together. I believe it's supposed to be called the United States of America. And 
while we have a party in D.C. that made tax cuts for the extreme wealthy and multinational corporations, we need to reverse that. Because while we're making all of this accessible, and I do not have anything against people becoming trillionaires either. Yes, I said with a T. You become a trillionaire, but you're responsible and you help society and you, you teach people or you bring opportunities, real opportunities, not exploitation. I don't have a problem with that. But I do believe those who have more have a right to put out more. And so I'll leave you with this thought. People say I'm a liberal, but I'm not. I'm thinking common sense. I'm thinking what will help you, Jack? What will help you out there maybe watching this on online or maybe you're at a bar having a good old time? What's going to help you? What's going to help my friend John become a millionaire by the time he's 46? What's wrong with being a millionaire? Nothing. What's wrong with being a billionaire or a trillionaire? Nothing. But let us help each other. Not just in America, but around the globe. Let's remember that, my friends. Because remember that you and humanity really does matter. This isn't a game. And as far as people say that you didn't stay on one topic, this may have been a roundabout way, but it's all about common sense. and. As I said, some of the answers to get rid of the school shootings, university shootings, or anywhere, you need common sense gun control. You need to have the guards, the metal detectors, and I think an anti-bullying pro anti program. Now, maybe all of you think, well, you really don't have any expertise. Let me tell you. I was bullied for a good 12 straight, or no, about eight straight years in school, probably more. Every day, sorry, beat up a heck of a lot of time. I know what it means to be bullied. And I'm sure that a lot of you know. So let's do something about it. So I want you to write these down because I got to get going. Write these numbers down. I'll say them twice, make it easy. First thing I want you to do, if you live in the city of Pittsburgh, I want you to start getting some action. I want you to call your city council. I don't know their number directly, but call city council. Start telling them some of the things you want to see done. Call the mayor's office. That number is 412. Yeah, Mayor Bill Peduto's office is 412. 255-2626. I want you to call your local state legislator, which I don't know their number, but also call the staff of the governor. 717 787 Two five hundred, and of course, call Congress at two zero two 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 four three one two one. Friends, one last number: the White House comment line two zero two four five six one 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 one. You want to make America great? You want to start earning a better living? You want to start making sure you have what you need in life? Your children are living. You're living. You have what you need. You have a pension, you have health care. Take action. Hey, if I can overcome obstacles and do this show, I believe in you. Now remember, everybody, I love you. That's why I'm here. One last thing. David Odin series, series, Billy Graham, Sue Grafton, Rose Marie, Heather Menzies, and Dick Edberg. I say um, we miss you. They have passed away. We miss, miss all of them. And remember, everybody, you're alive today. Think out of the box. Become that billionaire. 
because your brain is amazing. Remember that you and humanity really does matter. Good night, everybody.